everybody. Welcome to RBL Weekly. I'm Sarah Keller, and as you can see, we are in a different studio today. So shout out to Melrose Podcast Studios for letting us come in here and not having to drive all the way to El Segundo, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, thank Also, you. shout out to Ari Manis, who wrote another children's book. Another, another one. Another one. He wrote, and another one. And another one. And another one. He wrote uh, Polar Bears Like Candy that you can get on Amazon, and it is illustrated by the also incredibly talented Stephen Garza. Yeah, I mean, everyone knew about polar bears and Coca-Cola, but candy, this is new, new ground. So check it out, it's informational. I am not Pat Barker, the commissioner. He is in Las Vegas writing jokes about robots. I am Sarah Keller, and I am joined by the RBL Weekly famous Paige Wesley. Paige, Hello. how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I like that you just said that Pat was writing jokes about robots with no other context. Like, he just yeah. was like, that's the place you do it. I'm going to drive out to the desert and write jokes about robots. I specifically planned it like that because I was like, <laughs> this business is weird and I'm just going to leave it weird and vague. Go for it. So, anyway, <laughs> while Pat is gone writing jokes about robots, I will be here and I will have guest hosts every week, and I'm super stoked to have Paige Wesley, probably the most featured battler on RBL Weekly. I've been on, I think out of the 11 episodes, I'm on five? Girl. Or something like that. Unstop, like literally, there's not even, there are cities that haven't had that many battles on. Catch up. Yeah. You heard it here, guys. <laughs> yeah. Paige Wesley calling them out. Yeah. All right. Well, last week, we left with Chicago on top of the rankings. So this week we'll see we'll see who comes out. It's such a great battle too. Like, oh man, Leah Cage Leah Cajunian is one of my favorite battles that I've ever had. And Bob Keen, I I met when he came to LA a while back, and it's extremely funny. So to see them go at each other, amazing. So watch last week if you hadn't. I yeah. guess. You heard it here, folks. Unsolicited. I did not pay her to Unsolicited. say that. Unsolicited. No, that's a great battle. It was very fun to watch. So good. All right. Well, well our first battle, number five, comes out of L.A. again. Another great one. Features an all-star, like one of the OGs in Rose Battle, one of the best writers, featuring an up-and-comer who has been battling a lot, is a great writer, but just hasn't quite broken through, you know, to that upper echelon. But I think this is uh, this was his opportunity to try to do that. He was facing a great for the first time. Uh, so let's check out Doug Fager versus Ryan Nesson. Ryan recently got married because sometimes women fall in love with their kidnapper. <laughs> it's very sweet. He refers to her as the one that didn't get away. <laughs> Ryan just got tested and was found to have a low sperm count. Which is weird, because I thought Jews were usually pretty good with numbers. <laughs> the sperm count is so low that every time he j ejaculates, the sperm bank charges him an overdraft fee. <laughs> Doug's brother died of food poisoning, and Doug drives a Prius. What's the difference between those two things? Why? What? You want to know? Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> a little gas doesn't kill a Prius. <laughs> And he's buried right next to Ryan's career. It's, it's, it's crazy to think that there are more people in this room right now than sperms in Ryan's ball sack. <laughs> viable sperms inside him that can share the same HBO Max account. You cannot spell Doug Fager's name without writing the word fag. <laughs> and you can't look at his face without thinking it. <laughs> it's true. Doug, uh, Doug actually gets a lot of fights because of his last name. The most recent one was with his dad when he asked him to stop using it. Oh. <laughs> Ryan does a lot of Krav Maga, which I'm told is Jew karate. <laughs> Jew karate, he can get four kicks in for the price of one. That joke uh, was hard to swallow. <laughs> like the sandwich that killed your brother. But... Oh. 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 <laughs> your wife might as well be swallowing your sperm. It's not doing that. any good in her pussy. Oh. oh, man. That was a fun one. That was really fun. Uh, rarely in RBL do we see a beatdown. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, this was a beatdown. Yeah, it was even, I judged that battle live, and it was even more of a beatdown live. Like, sometimes on, on video, because of where the camera is in the room, you know, things sound a little different. It was a, it was a pretty decisive beatdown in person. 
Yeah. Which, you know, I will I will say I, I'm surprised. Ryan is usually a really good joke writer, and I thought his writing this time was lacking. Yeah, I, I think my my thing with Ryan is Ryan is consistently a good joke writer. Yes. You could never take that away from him. If you look at his past battles, he does a great job. He's very quick. He's very great about word economy, yes. which is one of my things. Like. If you can get the best joke in than the least amount of words, that's the most effective, in my opinion. And he's great about that. But the part that I think he's kind of missing is a, a personality that the audience can rally behind. And here's the thing. That is kind of difficult because you kind of, sometimes you have it naturally and sometimes you don't. And if you don't, trying to create that is very difficult. I think if you look at another battler like Toby Morishenu, who's an amazing joke writer, like a probably one of the best joke writers Roast Battle's ever seen, but he has some of the same struggle of like, he is, if he's battling somebody with a lot more charisma, he has to almost overwrite to overcome that. And I think that's kind of where Ryan's at here. Doug battles with a lot of charisma. That is yes. his game. And he wants to play and participate with you in a battle and have fun. And Ryan doesn't battle that way. Ryan battles straightforward with jokes. And if the crowd gets on the side of the person with more charisma, sometimes your jokes are not enough. So I think that's what we're seeing. I don't think we're seeing him write badly, per se. I think we're seeing two battlers who battle in very different ways, and one was just ultimately way more successful in this regard. I would say. See, and I 100% I, I agree. However, I, I do think that his joke writing in this battle... Particularly? Particularly was less. I think what you said sums up Ryan Nesson battles yeah, perfectly. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, this one, like the, you know, you can't spell fagger without fag. I wrote a joke almost exactly like that Every the first time I battled Doug, and I was surprised that Doug didn't use the same rebuttal, because when I did it, Doug said, my name wrote half that joke for you, and it murdered. Right. Like, that, that lost me that battle, was that joke. See, basically. and that that like I I heard the audience's eyes roll yeah. from on tape when he said that and and then the the end part was good though got got in a lot of fights mm -hmm. um so he just he didn't have the word economy that he normally has and also in the in the joke where he had audience participation uh like I don't think that was intended it but wasn't. it did make me laugh in the moment <laughs> I think Ryan was really nervous because I think, so I think he he saw that this was a big opportunity mm -hmm. um and and his nerves got to him. And I think to to tag on to what you were saying about the finding a personality that the crowd can rally behind, you know, it's this is what I say to every L.A. battler when they check in with me for the first time to battle. I say the most important thing that you can do is have fun. Yeah. That's rule number one. You have to have fun because if you don't have fun, the audience can't have, have fun. fun. Yeah. You have to give them permission to laugh at the fucked up shit you're saying. Verbatim, that is what I say every single Tuesday night in the belly room to every battler that's never been been there before. And Ryan didn't bring that to this time. He was not having a good time where Doug is, like you were saying, Doug is having a blast. Yeah. He's up there. He's ready to to dance with his, his partner and, and have a good time and riff. And Ryan was there. To try and win a battle. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and yeah, when you're going up against someone with charisma and – that's having a good time. You've got to just relax and have a good time. Yeah. I mean, my, I think not the most recent, because we did like a road battle in Huntington Beach, but the last time I battled Doug at the comedy store is probably one of my favorite battles of all time because it is just two people having the most fun. Like we would have battled for an hour if we could have if we had the jokes but that's kind of who you're up against and so if yep. you're not willing to play he's gonna outplay you yep. i mean i think we saw something kind of similar in his battle with ashley where you know he dressed up he was there you know and and he's a great rebuttal battler so if you give him anything he'll play with it yes. and so the other thing that i've noticed about ryan is he doesn't laugh at jokes about him and that's tricky. Some people don't like to do it. But I think it's one of those things that wins the audience over yes. for you a little bit. Because when you're like, I'm having a good time. I think this is fun, too. 
I'm going to laugh at my opponent's jokes about me because I think they're funny. It does garner you some goodwill because people are like, okay, they're playing along. Everyone's playing together. Totally. Because otherwise it, it comes across as mean. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're just bullying now because you're not laughing. You're not having a good time. So you're not enjoying this, which means that you're now being vicious. Right. Exactly. Well, hopefully we will see a little bit better from Ryan next time. And I'm sure we're going to see lots more of Doug Fager. Well, let's move on to our number four battle of the week. It comes out of Chicago. Features two battlers that are great. We have Adam Quasilo versus Ryer Cameraman. Uh, last week, Chicago was on top. So mm -hmm. let's see what happens with Adam Quaslo versus Ryer Cameraman. Adam and, I, Adam and I have a lot in common. People don't know that. You know, we actually, uh, our, our pronouns get mixed up a lot. You know, people call me they because I'm ambiguous. People call Adam they because he just genuinely looks like a lot of people. <laughs> Uh, Ryer is so generous. Like, she will not hesitate to give you one of her extra chromosomes. <laughs> I, I, I work in special education. That's why they asked me to do this with Adam. <laughs> Jokes on you, I get graham crackers later. <laughs> yeah, uh, Adam's dad passed away by slipping in a shower. I was just yeah. Hey, hey, if I got over it, you can. <laughs> I want us to think about first how how sad that is. You know, because people die in war, people get shot. Adam's dad slipped on a goddamn loofah. You know? But this just that's the setup to the joke. But here's the thing. <laughs> now Adam honors his dad by looking like he's never taken a shower. <laughs> Jewish showers got ruined for us 90 years ago. <laughs> so Ryer uh, is actually uh, is, is more of a sustainable food. Like she'll still eat meat, but only if it's ethically sourced from the side of the road. Because <laughs> <laughs> I eat pussy and he doesn't. <laughs> She just landed the role of the villain in every movie about summer camp. <laughs> oh, that was great. That was so good. I'm incredibly impressed with both of those battlers. Yeah, I would say that's a perfect example of what we were talking about in the last battle of play with your opponent. Exactly. Play I, together. Yes, yeah. yes. They're, uh, honestly, I don't remember the jokes as much as I remember the the flawless comebacks. There, yeah, the comebacks are flawless, and Adam is playing my favorite game of self deprecation, like rebuttal yes. than joke. Uh, the graham crackers one got me. That was so great. It was adorable. So fun. Th this is so great. I would love to see more from either one of those battlers. They both did an amazing job. Oh, definitely. I, yes. I, I, I I'm just assuming we're gonna see a lot oh, of them because yeah. if they stop. That's a travesty. Right. <laughs> yeah. They're so fun. That like that type of battle is my favorite battle of like not really any bombs, rebuttals all over the place. Everyone's having fun. They're both having a good time, clearly. Like when you watch that battle, they're as excited to be there as everyone else. Yes. And they're so excited to like hit each other with jokes, jump in on jokes. That's an amazing battle. I love that battle. I agree. And I think it touched on what you were saying about the Doug and Ryan battle in that the audience was very invested in them. Absolutely. Like they, they loved them because they were having fun. And that was very evident when the audience member was like, aw, when he mentioned his dad died I in got shower. over it. So can you. Yeah. Perfect rebuttal. Just so good. like chef's kiss all along. Like the audience member was, was yes. great. Like, oh, it was and that's the kind of connection you can get with an audience when you're having fun. But also, when that audience member reacted and he said, I got over it, so can you, that was in service of the other battler's joke. Yep. 
that's the key. Like, that's somebody who is battling to have a good show, not to win a battle, and that is the best. That's the attitude to have. I, I couldn't agree more. It's something that I have always uh, – said in is in a battle you have to be chivalrous yes and i don't know why i started saying that because but that's the term i think that fits it the best is you have to be chivalrous you have to let your partner do a good job yeah because it makes you look better it does and so when you are stepping on their jokes or not having a good time like you're not giving the partner what you need to create a great battle well, and I think that applies all the way out to picking your opponents, which yes. th- that's something I tell new battlers all the time is pick someone who can beat you. Yes. Like the better your opponent is, the better you look if you keep pace with them. Yes. So even if you're going to lose, like if it is a good battle for both of you, if the jokes are amazing, no one remembers who won. They just remember it was a good battle. So pick good people. Don't pick people you can beat. Don't deliberately pick a beat down. Try to pick as evenly matched as you can. Yeah. Uh, I Like, I live by the same thing. If you don't scare me, I'm not going to battle you. Because yeah. I don't, that's not fun. It's I don't, not. Yeah. And... It's not fun for the audience. No, the, the audience doesn't want to see a beat down because then it's sad. Then then the audience is like, oh, oh, that person might actually feel bad. But when you see something like what we just saw, no one feels bad. Everyone's in on it. Everyone's playing along. And the audience is going to also not pick sides. That's really important because like in a battle like that, if somebody's like really just beating somebody down, the audience is going to pick a side yep. and the battle's going to turn a lot faster. When people are cooperative like that, the audience is like, I don't know who's going to win. I'm just rooting for every good joke. And that's the best scenario. And little industry secret, being the underdog in roast battle mm-hmm. is an advantage. It is an advantage. So especially if you can come from behind in a battle yes. that will win you a battle. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, anyway, great battle, Adam and Rear, absolutely fantastic. Our next battle, our number three battle, comes out of Austin, Texas, and it features Casey Rocket versus Holly Johnson. It is such an honor to be roasting the volleyball from Castaway. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Casey, you look like a carnival game operator and the clown you shoot the water into. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty rude. I wouldn't expect anything less from the girl who hangs out with Slender Man every day. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but if you rearrange the letters in Holly Johnson's name, it spells, I like it to N-word. <laughs> and when I confronted her about this, she said, you know what, Casey, you know what they always say, a picture says a thousand in words. <laughs> she was in Charlottesville. I have as much confidence about this as Casey has teeth, so this is <laughs> gonna be good. Oh, hold on, for this next roast, I hope you don't mind if I slip into something a little more comfortable. Oh. <laughs> Release the files, Holly. That's really strong words for someone who literally flooded New Mexico with blue crystal meth. <laughs> you absolute nightmare. <laughs> Think about the kids. Casey, you literally look like the elf on the shelf if he was hiding in your mother's medicine cabinet. Holly looks like the girl from the ring if she only crawled out of a Nintendo DS. Casey, uh, he studied abroad in Paris. Yeah, he thought he was in Paris. He was actually just getting Eiffel Towered under a bridge. (laughs) All he remembers is eating a meal with a talking rat. That's about it. Okay, well, if I'm such a bad guy, why did I literally hang out with Nelson Mandela last night? For my final roast, I've prepared a written statement. On October 21st, All Hallows' Eve, 2021, the defendant, Holly, I like it to end word, Johnson, (laughs) snuck into my two-bedroom, three-bath house, which was gifted to me after I killed Osama bin Laden. 
I noticed that she was in my bedroom because she smelled like a fucking diaper. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I woke up on a dentist chair and she was trying to take my normal sized teeth. and put them in her small ass mouth. <laughs> and then she sung the Russian national anthem and I punched Slender Man so hard he died. Amen. <laughs> oh God. Oh my God. That was, oh. uh, first of all, what a journey. <laughs> that was one of the most fun battles I have ever oh. seen. And I, I have to say, at first I was like, oh, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> because she came out swinging real she hard did. with the, the, the volleyball castaway joke. And, and the clown. And the carnival. Oh, so funny. And he was kind I was like, oh, man. Prop Every roasting. Time. But that, it just, <laughs> the more, okay, for me, the moment when it like turned, turned the tide was when he had a prop for a rebuttal about himself. Yeah. Where, where he was like, if I'm such a bad guy, why what? wouldn't I hang yes. out with Nelson Mandela? That sealed it for me. I, I do feel bad for Holly because that is almost unroastable. Yes. Which is very, very tough. Like, she is doing her job. She's writing jokes. She's performing them. The props do kind of give him a little bit of an unfair advantage, I would say. However, the reason I will give him credit for it is because he didn't just do random props. It's like he built a story. story. Yes. <laughs> it's like Toby with the slide projector yes. the or the PowerPoint presentation where it's building to something crazy. And that last one, normal sized teeth. teeth? I don't, like the, the second he said normal sized teeth, I was like, I'm sure he's going to say that her mouth is small. But the fact that he had to define it is madness. I love And then he ends it with amen. Like, amen. It, just, it was top to bottom flawless. From Casey, especially because <sighs> it was it was kind of like what you were talking about, where it the best is when you win the audience over. You start under and yes. then you win them over, which I think is what he did. He kind of did intentionally, yeah. um, or maybe not. I don't know. I mean, I I think anytime you introduce something that is outside the normal standard of play, the audience is going to be unsure. Yes, it's why things like tag team are risky, or uh, if you're doing song parodies, or or if you do jokes all in a theme. Now, if you're successful and the jokes get like better and better and better the longer that theme goes, it will win you that battle. But it is a risky proposition. And that's essentially what he did. I, I think that it would have almost been better served with PowerPoint because then people would have seen it more. Um, but really, the, the one thing that uh, kind of makes me not love it is that he's it's more dependent on his Photoshop ability than his joke writing. But the placement of those Photoshops and then the joke at the end, I it kind of wins it over for me. That was hilarious. You're good. Oh, all right. Yeah, that was so much fun. I mean, I, and I, I. I, I'm i going to be completely honest. I hated him at first. I hated I was mm. like, what are you doing? This is a tear. I'm so mad. Like, you're going to do props. That's lazy. Like, but it built to such a great finale. I was like, okay, this was totally worth it. And like you were saying, big risk. Yeah. Big risk. Because as a, a, a roast battle snob, uh, I didn't like it. I was like, this isn't pure roast battle. Um, to your point about the the joke writing, I I agree the joke writing you know wasn't there as much. He was relying on the props. However, that's a different to me. That's an, another it's a another form skill. of yeah. joke writing because I wouldn't have thought to do that. I would not have thought to Photoshop my face next to Nelson Mandela. Mandela. No, I mean just so. <laughs> but I'm so glad good. he did. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and to your point, I think Holly was rattled by it. Yeah, uh, and I can speak to you know I battled Alex Hooper. When that was, I was gonna bring up Alex when yeah. he uh, came out as the character, right? Even though he told me he wasn't going to, uh, and it shook me, and I lost the battle handedly because mm -hmm. I let it rattle me, and so I totally empathize with her a hundred percent. And next time, hopefully, you'll be like, okay, don't let it rattle. You still have fun, you know? Yeah. Well, and I mean, Pat Barker has had a very similar experience yep. with Alex Hooper, and that's kind of one of those things of 
if you battle as a character, A, you run the risk of the character not working, but B, it it throws your opponent off so that they can't necessarily battle you effectively. Yep, totally. We are on to our number two battle of the week. We're going back to the belly room, back to LA. We have the undercard championship where our the current champion, John Luna, is fighting, fighting facing off against Reed Clark. Let's mm-hmm. check it out. John actually has been working out a little bit recently. You can tell by his elbows. He's been army crawling through powdered donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for uh, my opponent, Mentally Offset. <laughs> now, Reed does have a comedy album out. It's called Couches and Cafes. It's named after the places where he has to sleep. <laughs> John's a big sneakerhead. He buys a lot of shoes, but it's going to get real funny when he loses a foot. Uh, and, uh, Fe- on February 19th in uh, 1993, Reed Clark was born, okay? But on February 19th in 1887, Thomas Edison invented the phonograph. I think if Thomas Edison could have heard Reed Clark's music, he would have not invented the phonograph. That's <laughs> what I'm here to say. Okay. Long journey, that punchline. <laughs> the longest walk he's ever taken. Yeah. Yeah. Reed's dream in life is to be on SNL, but he's only ever been on EBT. <laughs> Reed looks like the predator if the only thing he hunted was Pokemon. <laughs> it was great. I, I judged that one too. It was the same night as Doug and uh, Ryan, and the crowd was ravenous for that battle. At some point, I think they've probably cut it out of the clip. Uh, live, you would have heard, heard me screaming from the judges' table because some of those like rebuttals they landed and some of the bonus jokes they ended up doing, because it went to overtime amazing such a good battle well i i i feel like that was just that was so quick even and but i could tell uh you know john did retain the title he did because what we didn't see in in this clip is that a couple of reed's later jokes kind of lost some steam um and when you're going up against somebody for a title shot you got to really beat them yeah yeah that's something we've talked about on this podcast a little bit is how uh sometimes those title matches can fall flat and i don't know if Mm -hmm. it's if it's the pressure or i think so i think that's what it is yeah yeah i mean i have a title yeah good luck (laughs) and uh i'm regretting the decision no i'm just kidding it's gonna be great uh, but yeah i'm terrified um but uh back to this battle I I thought the the army crawling joke was was so, so good. good. Uh, mentally offset is fantastic, hilarious. Uh, these are two two guys that were having a good time together. So fun again. Um, I I will say John's joke where he got a laugh just stating the date that Reed was born. I mean, anytime somebody starts a joke with in 1993, like, yeah. you know, it's going to be a journey. The last time I saw somebody do that is when Pat Barker tried to justify that me learning to walk as a child uh, caused yes. the 1989 earthquake. Um, yes. But I, and I felt like that's kind of what that joke is missing is enough of a turn. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's exactly what I was going to say is it was a long journey. Like Josh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Josh Meyerowitz said for not that big of a payoff right uh so i loved it and i thought the audience gave it the 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 laughs it deserved (laughs) with the the absurdity of on this date and then in history and Mm -hmm. i guess could isn't there something more interesting that happened uh in history on that date that he could find that sure could have been a a harder hit that's all yeah for sure Uh, that being said john did retain his title and Mm -hmm. he's still the current los angeles undercard champion that is the longest running yeah undercard champion because Alyssa Petit was defeated in her first mm-hmm. uh, match against an opponent. So I don't know who John is battling next, but I'm yeah, very excited about next, it. But I am excited about it. All right. Well, that brings us to our number one battle of the week. Yay. Uh, this is coming from New York. We have two people that we have featured on this pod several times. You know him. You love him. It is Dan Wicks versus Derek Humphrey. Uh, Derek fought in the Iraq War. Wait, I said that wrong. Uh, Derek fought in the Snack War. (laughs) 
and wishes he was old enough for Vietnam Nam. <laughs> Derek, you look like you eat deep fried brains. <laughs> Dan wants to be a road comic, but he can't because those roads always come within 500 yards of a school. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was in the Navy. Uh, my toughest mission was taking a dive in Dan's mom's pussy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's true. I did serve overseas. I was gassed. It was horrific. But nothing will ever smell as bad as Dan's mom's pussy. <laughs> Dan's dad was in the Twin Towers on 9-11, right? Fortunately, he escaped. <laughs> he escaped that terrorist act only to later develop mesothelioma in his lungs from inhaling the smell of Dan's mom's <laughs> pussy. Well, I think my mom's pussy smells great. Wait. <laughs> What actually, right? I'll be quick. I, I, I'm speed, I'll speed up a little bit so Derek can get back to transitioning into a lunch lady. <laughs> Dan loves roast battle because it's the only way he gets to share the stage with good comics. <laughs> <laughs> You're not giving me a lot of stage to share, buddy. <laughs> Dan used to date Maddie Smith of MTV's Wild and Out. Until Maddie dumped him. Yeah. Maddie would do anything for comedy except for pretend that Dan was good at it. Uh, yeah, yeah I, did, I did date Maddie Smith of MTV's Wild and Out. Yeah, Derek's just jealous because he'll never do anything funny. <laughs> Rilo, Ma Maddie did say that Dan gave good head. Um, she was just hold his head down there and tell a joke and wait for his autism to kick in. <laughs> God damn, that was morbid. <laughs> Not the joke, the obesity. <laughs> As you can tell, Dan's got a real chip on his shoulder. It's from when he was eating paint for lunch. <laughs> Paint was all that was left. You ate everything else. <laughs> it's too easy, too easy. All right, all right. Oh, man, that was fun. That was very fun. Derek Humphries is one of my favorite battlers to watch, and I love a good three-joke run oh. on the same topic. And anytime you can bring in mesothelioma, you win me over. <laughs> I mean, I mean the, the craftsmanship to have so mesothelioma great. with your mom's pussy. Yes. It's just, I mean, what a, what a delightful word sandwich to say. I know, I know. Selena and Barnes would approve. I think I'm going to go to bed just saying mesothelioma <laughs> and mom's pussy. Like, that's, it's calming. It is great, but then you have to look at Dan's comeback. First of all, to what? say, like, I think my mom's my pussy, pussy smells, smells fine. Good. Terrifying. But then uh, a lot of his comebacks later about, like, you're not giving me a lot of the stage Dave. to share. He was doing great. That paint chip joke. So, so good. And and when he, and he followed it with, that was the only thing left. That was the only thing left because you ate everything else. Again, an example of battlers playing with each other and playing off each other so, so, so well. That was a great battle. Yeah, that was one of those uh, that, you know, Jeff, I think, would say they were dancing up there. Yes. Like, every, it was just, it was a back and forth. It was fun. It was flirty. It was cool. I loved it. I loved it. Dan Wicks, Derek Humphrey, uh, two people that we will see on our very special Halloween show. I'm so excited. Happening Monday, Halloween, October Halloween. 31st. Mm -hmm. In the main room of the Comedy Store, we have Paige Wesley. Yes. Battling Heather Keith from Austin. It's going to be great. We have Dan and Derek coming in from New York, I'm both so of excited. them. We got John Luna coming. Yep. It's going to be Morgan Anderson. Morgan Anderson yeah. from the Bay. It's going to be an epic night. Get your tickets now. You can also stream it live on movie.com, right? Mm. All right, well. Maybe. Maybe. It's going to be streaming somewhere, so pay attention for that. But buy your tickets if you're in L.A. because it's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's going to be worth being there live for sure. All right, well, now it's time to get to those rankings. Last week, Chicago was out on top by one point. Mm -hmm. And this week, drum roll please, while I pull up my phone so I can find the graphic. I mean, I have a guess. 
Who, who do you think is number one? I think it's going to be Los Angeles because we had two in this week. That's right. It is Los Angeles. We are number one. Uh, so at five, we have Austin with 20 points. It's a tight race. We got number four is London with 26 points. Three, New York with 27, po- sorry, 29 points. Two, Chicago with 30 points. And number one, Los Angeles with 32 points. So those top three, I mean, they're all within three points of each other. Yeah. So it's still anybody's game. Uh, any predictions on who will come out on top next week? You know, I don't know, but I think that Halloween show is going to shift some stuff because you've got the top battlers from every city essentially battling it out. Yeah, I, I wonder how will I don't know. I, I don't know because technically it's everybody, right? So right. maybe winners? I don't know. but Maybe winner. It'll be up to the commish. Yeah. The we'll commissioner have will have to be back by back then. Come back from the desert, stop writing about robots and no more tell robot us what puns. to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this has been a fun episode. Thank you to the amazing Paige Wesley. Thank you for having me. This is a blast. Paige, where can people find you? Uh, You can find me at Rampage Wesley on Instagram and TikTok and at Paige Wesley on Twitter. Heck yeah. And you can find me, Sarah Keller, Sarah Keller 07 on everything. And uh, follow us at RBL Weekly. Follow Pat Parker. And we'll see you next week.